All right, so we're going to uh, do a thing new, new segment. So this is Magazine Madness, everybody. This is a new segment that I think would be kind of cool if it became a thing. Maybe it will. I don't know. But what we do here is we're going to cover a number of... Hang on, let me get a decent song for this to start. Yeah, this is fine. We're going to just go through a lot of video game magazines. We're going to check out some ads, some weird pages. And Jackal helped put this together. And there's other credits as well. So I'll give an example of what you can expect while I change the Twitch stuff. So, stuff like this. If you give me a second, I'll read it. So I grew up with magazines. That's how I knew about video game stuff when a lot of my friends just knew like a couple. You know, they knew some stuff, but not really too much. I had um, like three or four different subscriptions. And I actually remember some of these ads, and we've done something like this before, but I like the, the logo and the title, Magazine Madness. So, um, I'm going to just do talk shows and podcasts for this. So, yeah. Your own alien, a seven-foot-tall, out-of-this-world replica, and one of the movie massi massive monsters... Replica of one of the movie's massive monsters, a most unusual companion, which was based on, like, a penis -y alien from H.R. Giger. Believe it or not, Ripley's cryotube, an actual prop from the movie. It's the cryogenic chamber, like the one Ripley used to travel through space and time in Alien 3. This is Nintendo Power? I wonder who got that. Also, it's, like, cracked. I would love to do a follow-up and find out who has that right now. Like, the alien and the cryotube. Hmm. Well, if you know where that is, please get in touch. Because I would, I would love to see what condition it's in now. We have... Got Bobblehead Fever. Oh, that's kind of disturbing. Now you can get f one free Major League Baseball bobblehead doll in each marked box of these post cereals. Collect all ten. So this is like kind of a companion piece to Commercial Chaos, but it's print ads, obviously. Uh, that looks 3D. And I don't like it. Is that balls? What is this shit? They've been smacked, pinched, kicked, and sat on, and they're fuming mad. And coming this fall, two more insanely funny books by Andy Griffiths. Just kidding and just annoying. Oh, psycho butt. Okay, chat. I thought, I thought those were Randy Ball's big balls. But it turns out it's actually psycho butt. Hang on a second. Do I have Crazy Butt still? I have to. There's no way I would have gotten rid of Crazy Butt. Also, I like the idea that there are chat members who have not seen Crazy Butt. No items match your search. Well, that was quick. A chat member found it. This is the version with my commentary, so... Sorry. <laughs> it's the monster from Yokoi Watch! <laughs> it's like exactly that. Unfortunately, that cuts out the beginning where he says, Crazy Boot! But... But is this crazy butt? No. No, that's that's different. 
Oh, well, it's here somewhere. Here's more. Best-selling author Andy Griffith's The Day My Butt Went Psycho, based on a true story. The fuck is wrong with this guy? Warning, do not open this book within 20 feet of any adult. <laughs> this book is full of disobedient butts, cluster butts, kamikaze butts, giant unwiped butts, <laughs> and explosive butt candies. It's also full of giant maggots, poop poises, poop poises, like a tortoise, mutant blowflies, butt piranhas, and stink ants. If you are offended by any or all of these things, read something safe, like a book on decorating. Otherwise, get your butt to the bookstore and ask for the day my butt went psycho. I feel like this is just like Chuck Tingle's early years. Also, someone in chat just posted this. That's very disturbing. I like it, but it's very disturbing. So, yeah, I mean, Chad is saying that these books were actually pretty funny. Um, that he was Australian, and listen, I read Are You Slime, which is uh, Goof Lumps, and R. L. Stein, which is Goosebumps. Can you tell which was a copy of which? Who knows? Sorry, next one is Corn Nuts. Okay, I have a little something that uh, maybe maybe you're familiar with. Corn Porn? That's my brand. It's a very, very specific brand. Surprisingly hardcore corn snacks. Instead of Hustler, it's Husker. Wow, it actually is, like, basically corn porn. And yet, that is another image I cannot find. How do I lose sight of my things so easily? Look at the eyes. I'm looking at the eyes. This guy loves it. Here, this is corn porn. Not that. Hang on. This. There it is. I submitted that in college um, for a graphic design course, and I actually ended up getting, like, I think a decent score for it. Porn gone wrong. I feel like these people stole my idea, but I probably stole theirs. It's a corn. Surprisingly hardcore corn snacks in eight mean flavors. Well, I think we should pivot to the video game ads. So that's just unrelated random stuff. So here's... Here's video game stuff. With you, foreplay takes on a, new, a whole new meaning. Huh? Chat, can you guess what this is an ad for? Like, what game do you think this is an ad for? Four play, PS1, Katamari, Four Swords, Mother 3. Mother 3? Golf? Mario Tennis? Porn? Star Fox? Pikmin? Uh, how about Gauntlet? Dark Legacy? Four play at its best. Yeah, I would have never. Like, you could have given me 200 guesses. I probably wouldn't have gotten that. Clever ad, though. And by the way, not a bad game. If it's the one I'm thinking of. Barbarian. I was a 99-pound barbarian. I used to get molten lava kicked in my face. 
I was a little girly man, better suited to playing with the sissy baby dolls than with the battle axes. But then I mastered the upgrade feature and barbarian. Now nobody messes with me. Nobody. Wow. They basically just stole that from Dana Carvey and Kevin Nealon from the um, the the people they play in SNL. Pump you up! Barbarian's a revolutionary new game engineered to increase and maintain character power and ferociousness fast. In recent head-to-head -head field tests, even mildly upgraded barbarians crush their friends and foes without mercy. There's ten characters to choose from, huh? And there's a multiplayer mode. Wow. I never even heard of this game. The four-player mode is wicked, it says. Now, if only I could find four opponents I haven't already killed, I would show you Barbarian's eight-player, eight-character on-screen mayhem. Yeah, I had a PS2. Never heard of Barbarian. Was it good? I don't know. I don't think anyone in chat has heard of it either. Average? Roast a few weenies tonight. Dying to burn a few buddies on a next generation system, but can't decide on which one. Before you blow a wad of cash, check them out at Blockbuster Video first. Rent a Sony PlayStation or Sega Saturn system in two games for three evenings at a price you can't pass up. And if you're still looking for some 16-bit action, we have plenty of that too. So come on in and start cooking tonight. Offer expires in 1996. My god. Anyone here remember 1996? Someone just said, what the fuck is that Kubrick stare? Yeah, I know. I mean, you can tell... First of all, sandals with socks. That's a crime. But you can kind of tell when, when these ads were made just based on, like, style and, like, fashion. So this is still, like, flannel era. Also, that abomination controller, I had one of those. Grab that, oh god, grab that clutch, or grab the clutch, the ultimate joystick for Sega Genesis, and feel the power. He's like, becoming Mad Max. The power clutch, SG. Man, I make. How do you get so cool? Oh, the power clutch is how. Wow. The Bandicoot's running away with running with a whole new crowd. It's Xbox. Which crash is this? The Wrath of Cortex. Here comes Crash in the biggest character-based game to hit Xbox. The Wrath of Cortex. Lightning fast load time. Super enhanced graphics. Fully detailed environments. He's really going all out for this one. A little bit of violence. Not too much. Just a little bit. Uh, how was this game? Was this a bad crash game? Or kind of good? Uh, rushed, but okay. People are mostly saying it was mid. To use that term, yeah. I didn't play that one. There's only one thing more torturous than playing Death Trap Dungeon. Not playing it. Oh my god. What do you do, like, when you buy your video game magazine? You buy your Game Informer, and then, like, your mom is walking by. What are you reading, honey? Um! Um! Uh! It's a video game ad! It says here, beat me, whip me, or just don't hit that quit button without minus, uh, without or. Minus the word or. Consider it your battle cry. Then bring on the skeletal warrior zombies and over 50 other undead denizens. Each one 
is a chance to slice and dice like a Ginsu knife gone bad. An opportunity to master the 13 death implements at your disposal. Or play the PC version and leave the other online players crying for more. Because in these 10 cavernous levels of evil traps, it's all about blurring that fine line between pleasure and pain. Just when you think you can't take it any longer, consider the alternative. It actually says on the sidebar that Ginsu is a registered trademark <laughs> of something something company, which has no affiliation with IDOS. <laughs> this is kind of like, again, the error of video game like magazine ads I'm used to, so none of this was weird at the time. This was like pretty normal. Signs and symptoms of depression. Persistent sadness and or irritability. Recurring thoughts of how much better life would be if you had Fighting Force or Tomb Raider 2. Statements such as, I'm bad, I'm stupid, no one likes me. When depression strikes, immediately seek the help of a trained professional at your local video game store. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I, I was just been going through some shit. Like, Caleb at school just does not like me. Hmm. He, like, kind of really, like, just wipes the floor with me and, like, pushes me into my lockers and stuff. Uh, this is a Funko Land? Yeah, I know, dude. So, like, what do you think I should do? Like, my parents have been fighting more and more every, every night. And, like, even Caleb said that, like, they're going to get divorced and stuff. Uh, do you want Tomb Raider? Research shows that the leading cause of depression among gamers is a noticeable lack of IDOS games. Fortunately, this deficiency can be treated both safely and effectively with games like Fighting Force or Tomb Raider 2, but early intervention is crucial, or else it's only a matter of time before they threaten to do something really stupid, like go to therapy. <laughs> oh, uh, hasn't aged the best. I mean, but the thing is, you know it's a joke. And I'm sure most kids knew that this was like a, a video game joke ad, but it didn't, it didn't age well. It's like, come on, come on. Now Tucker's going to go to GameStop or Funko Land. But yeah, again, this is what I grew up with, chat. Only in Donkey Kong Country, runaway minecarts, blasting barrels, and one swimming gorilla. Wow. It's just a, yeah, just a drowning monkey. Huh. In water, chimps will drown. And that's the whole ad. That's, that's the whole ad. I would have bought it just based on that ad. I remember this. I remember this ad. Except no substitute. Although the response to the Duke Nukem casting call was overwhelming, in the end, there can only be one king. The king of carnage, Duke Nukem. He's back, out of hiding and ready to rock. Make him history with Duke Nukem Time to Kill, the revolutionary third-person shooter, exclusively on PlayStation Game Console, and rage through the ages, fragging every alien that ever was. Coming this fall, chew on balls. Oh, or raise the stakes with the highly anticipated Duke Nukem Forever and put out the lights in Las Vegas with the PC blockbuster for the next century. What year was this? This is 1998. Little did they know, Duke Nukem Forever would not release for another 10 years. More. More, 11 years. Didn't it come out in 2010? Was it 2010 or 11? Oh god. 12. Yeah, so there's even a screenshot in there. But, um... I, I do like the other Dukes. And I do remember this ad pretty, pretty well. I remember this ad, too. Rayman 3. Plunge into 55 enormous levels and whip out all new powers and gear <laughs> to battle the gargantuan 
something army led by massive transforming bosses. Someone just said disconnected cock. Probably. Eh. It, yeah, even there. Dick jokes were pretty common, even in, like, magazine ads. Um, you won't believe your eyeballs. I remember this one. This was another one that I, I grew up seeing in magazines. Game Boy Pocket. Yeah, I mean... I don't know if it's effective. It's a little weird, like a wall of flesh. It seems like a Square Enix or Squaresoft boss from, like, Secret of Mana. Well, it, you know, that was a boss. But, yeah, it's... It's fine. It's a little weird, but it's not Mario with a tribal tattoo. Rayman 2 pumped up for PlayStation 2. <laughs> okay. That's... Yeah. That's a little fucked up. I don't like it. I don't want to look at it. Oh, this is that fucking firefighter game. I remember this. Cozy up to the blistering hellfire of Burning Rangers, the phenomenal new game from Yuji Naka, creator of Sonic and Knights. Isn't he out of prison? Um, in this 3D scorcher, you're a, a one jetpack, one concussion gun techno ranger battling unpredictable firestorms. Victims lie everywhere. To save them, you have to rocket around the fire cyclone walls, exploding fuel tanks. Replays unlock nuke doors and secret areas, but that only escalates the shake and bake. Ashes to ashes, your dust. How do you advertise a game like this? Because it's got to be like... Like a weird concept. I don't know if this is it. Is this it? I don't know. But, uh... It, from what I heard, it's a pretty good game. Time to cut the cord with PlayStation 2. Freedom Shock 2. Oh, no. <laughs> oh! Great. So, it's... Okay, so you have a couple layers here. It's Mpreg. It's a bloody glove. Y you know, you got scissors on an umbilical cord. It's a... I, I want this controller. Thank you so much for advertising this controller to me. I really, I would very much love this. Chat, I fucking hate this ad so much. I want it off the screen, so we're gonna get rid of that. That was, like, existence. Yeah, I agree, chat member, that kind of was. Speed redefined. The ground only slows you down, F-Zero GX. Race through 20 gravity-defying courses at ridiculous speeds. It's the future of racing. Um, well, I love this game. This is an all-time classic for me. And, uh... Someone says, upset Vinny knows what Mpreg is. Listen, man, if you want to know the truth, that has been in my lexicon for, like, 15 years. And not because I wanted to know, but you also, how could you not know what it is? As soon as you ask what the M is, you know exactly what it is. It's the internet. But um, anyway, just to, sorry, to <laughs> sidetrack. This is a weird, I thought this was a Paper Mario kind of ad for a second, like, because I saw the cutouts. But I'm kind of leaning on the side of this is a pretty clever ad. I don't know, like, it, was there market research about show giant image that is not the game and then show tiny images of the game? Because there's mostly that kind of stuff happening. And I remember that was, yeah, that was like the main kind of ad that I saw growing up was that kind of stuff. So, time to trade game crazy. We understand. That's why we've created the ultimate neighborhood gaming store where you can trade in and trade up. If you send that to GameStop, you get 35 bucks in pocket lint. 13 gill in pocket lint! 
It's all I had. You earned it, big boy! Even when you're not playing it, you're playing it. You turned the system off hours ago, but as you teeter on the edge of sweet slumber, there's the game again. It plays on like a lullaby, just under your eyelids, an omen for, of the fun you'll have the next glorious moment you get the controller in your hands. You'll find game power like this in the Ninten in Nintendo GameCube. <clears throat> Excuse me, now at Walmart. We have all the games you've been dreaming of, and everyday low prices that mean you can actually afford them. Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's just cube eyes. I don't know. Someone said, why the hell was everything power back then? Yeah, there's a lot of like, now you're playing with power. You know, that kind of thing. That lasted a while, I think. Huh. Okay. I guess I'm gonna go buy Super Monkey Ball. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. Like, wh what's going on here? Obviously, I can't read what's happening, but without context, I have no idea what I'm supposed to get from this. He's showing his war face. Well, yeah, I mean, he seems indifferent to the drill sergeant. I don't know. I'm not sure. Dragon Ball Z, the legacy of Gaku 2. You just can't let it go, so don't. Get into DBZ, the legacy of Goku 2. You'll go from the Trunk Saga through the Cell games, with five playable characters and over 200 game maps to explore. June 2003, pre-order now. Oh shit, an ad for Grossology, which has left an indelible mark on the stream. Because you got stuff like this. Anal Sphincter. Charles Martinet, fine performance. Gross is good, finally learned the truth about boogers. Boogers are polluted nose mucus. 70 out of 100 people admit to picking their nose. Sticky boogers trap dirt and other gunk in the air. Boogers work like an air filter for your lungs. Boogers are just one of the stinky, scaly, slimy, or gross bodily functions you'll learn about in grossology. Explore the science behind icky stuff like zits, spit, scabs, diarrhea, and snot with your friends. <laughs> And because it's all educational, even your parents will be cool with it. <laughs> After all, it's based on the best-selling educational book series written by a teacher. And that's better than good. It's gross. Tom Green saw this, found it, played it, made Freddy Got Fingered. You know what? It's not... Freddy Got Fingered is not the grossest movie. I mean, it's, it's gross, but it does... Yeah, actually, no, there's, there's an umbilical cord swinging sequence. Never mind. Anyway, features nine exploratory labs on zits, saliva, smelly feet, and more. Don't pee your pants is one of the games in there. I did play this. Oh, he he zerks a horse. I forgot about that. Yeah, no, that movie's fucking disgusting. So yeah. Um Roger Ebert called it a masterpiece. Not really. If you want to see the Grossology stream, it's on YouTube. If you type full sauce Grossology. So, let's see. It's taken 22 minutes. Oh, good timing on the music. Wow. It's taken 22 man years, 32 megs, 32,000 colors, and one supercomputer to make him look this gruesome. Gruesome? Why gruesome? You've never seen, like, more like Gormless. You've never seen anything like this before. Donkey Kong Country is the world's first fully rendered video game. To produce it, it took 22 years work on six SGI workstations and on one XL supercomputer. The graphics are 3D. The 
playing arena. It's 32 megabit. The level's number 111. No, that's not a misprint. 111. That seems... That's not true. There's not 111 levels. Unless they're adding bonus levels. Probably screens? Um, but the most amazing aspect of Donkey Kong Country is that you don't need a 32-bit machine or a CD-ROM system to play it because Donkey Kong Country is only on the Super NES. So go and grab one now. You'll go absolutely ape. Google says 40 levels. Yeah, what the fuck are they talking about? And, and not only did they write 111 levels, they said, no, that's not a misprint. What? I don't know what that exactly it means, but okay. I would say bonus levels or screens they're counting. It's just fake. But I will say I have very, very strong memories of Donkey Kong Country like being a, this huge thing. And it was... We were like, how is the graphics so good? And it wasn't until like a couple years later that it made sense... Like, oh, it's all, like, renders that were taken and turned into sprites. Did you get the promotional VHS tape? I did get the promotional VHS tape. In fact, I will be watching some promotional VHS tapes. I think I watched that one. But I have a playlist of Nintendo promotional tapes. And I think I'm going to do that for a segment. But I will say this game delivered, and I still love it. I like DKC2 a little bit more, but I do think it's it's an awesome it's an awesome game and it was it was impressive to look at at the time, still kind of is in its own way. Well, not really, but on November 9th he's coming home. All his years of barrel jumping have finally paid off. He learned a starring he landed a starring role in his biggest adventure ever. Donkey Kong Country, The Legend of the Crystal Coconut. That's right. Why has he got a shit-eating grin? Like, that face is really weird. That is literally the expand dong meme? Is it? No, not really. I mean, Expand Dong has some different facets, but this is the one that I am most familiar with. However, there is... There's also this. So that, you, yeah, there, it looks like... It looks like this Expand Dong meme is malleable. You got stuff like that. You got stuff like that. Yeah. It says feature length in this ad. So yeah, I mean, it seems like this is one of the, the sources for Expand Dong. Spyromania sweeps the country. Spyro and Lara Croft, Hollywood's hot new couple. Oh boy. Purple dragon themed cults springing up around the globe. Disgruntled sheep seek damages. UFO or Spyro? Hmm. I, I okay. I mean, going for the World Weekly News, Weekly World News um, angle, I guess is pretty clever. Uh, but then, what are these? PlayStation condoms? Yep. The dongs that are shaped like triangles. And X's. The X one, that's just an alien one. Like, chat, if aliens don't have dongs that shape, 
They're not real aliens. Always ask an alien to drop trow. You, them, capiche? Doom, Super NES, 22 levels. All the original monsters and weapons, plus the new FX2 chip. Strap on your ammo. Start spilling, spitting, uh, spitting lead. Because the only thing that sucks worse than the pay are the odds. I guess it's a pretty, yeah, capiche. You got capiche. But um, I think that's a decent enough ad. The Doom SNES version is not the best, but if you have no other system and you want to play Doom, it's playable. PlayStation Heroin Addicts. Meet the girl who's going to kick Lara's ass. Who is this? I'm sorry, who? Whomst? Death Trap Dungeon. Oh, they gave her... Oh, someone just said gormless tits. You know what the difference is with this one? You can see the outline of her nipples. The nipolas are more visible. That's why she's going to kick Lara's ass. I know people don't want to believe this sometimes, but Lara Croft actually had some substance as well as being triangle titties. And... The series, I, I don't particularly love the Tomb Raider series, but I will admit that there was a little bit more to her and that the series attempted to do different things and tried to evolve. And they gave Lara backstory, not that kind of backstory, but real backstory. So you can't just have like sexy bu bubolas with nipolas on the cover and um, and be like, oh, this is going to kill Lara Croft. It's like, no, that's not that's not how that works. Also, wasn't there an ad for this game? Yeah, that was this ad. Whatever, what, what is this game? I've never heard of this fucking game. But I wonder how many of these, these games existed where they were like putting nipples all over the place and just expecting them to sell. I wonder if they did. This used the Tomb Raider engine. Playing Death Trap Dungeon is CBT. It is not the fun kind. You should play it on a Sunday. I'll consider it. Speaking of Lara Croft. <laughs> Hello, boys. So they even gave a little bit more cleavage here. <laughs> oh, God. It's so much more high-res than you're used to. And then you look at the face. It's like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We saw Death Trap Dungeons ads. We can do better than that. We gotta get proportions. And get them on the cover now. Someone just said it looks like a me face. Oh, man. Game and Farmer. Just okay, Luigi Odyssey. Oh, instead of Cappy, it's like Pansy. Game and Farcer. You know, this looks pretty okay. I would play this. What year? This must have been... Hang on a second. That must have been when Odyssey came out, right? So what, 2017? Yeah. The moon is a butt. Oh, it is. Oh, God, it is. It's just an ass. Good for them. Good for Luigi. He knows what's up. Um, eat, drink, and be Mario. I remember this ad. Frozen pizza, nasty nachos, and high caffeine soda. And that's just for appetizer. Welcome, player. Sorry. Welcome to Mario Party, an all-night bash where you can choose your favorite Nintendo characters and then battle it out against your buddies on six adventure boards and over 50 
different four-player games. By the time one of you finally stands alone, you'll all be crying about, sorry, crying out for a second helping. Mario Party, only on the Nintendo 64. The party's just getting going. So I was a little bit young for, um... Well, not really. I was probably about this age. But I didn't have parties where we threw cans and popcorn and pizza boxes on the floor. So I thought this is just what it was like to get older. And, like, you just were a fucking pig. <laughs> and, like, just put all your shit on the floor while playing Mario Party. I was like, I guess this is what it's going to be like. It's easier to eat four pounds of cafeteria meatloaf than beat someone who reads Nintendo Power. What are you talking about? Okay, I don't have memory of this one, but... Okay, then. I, I really don't know how I feel about this ad, because on, on some level, I respect it because it's ballsy. It's like, they're just going to take a picture of meatloaf and a weird-looking person, but, like, you know, the lunch lady with the weird face, basically. You know, making, making an angry look at you. Like, that's an ad? But sure. Why not? That's an ad. Good for you. Um, Monkey. South Sea Banana Co. It's Ape Escape. It's Ape Anarchy. And it's up to you to stop their banana-fueled mayhem. Hunt down over 200 unruly apes. Drive a tank and a remote control car. Etc, etc. Prepare yourself. Things are about to get hairy. I feel like I remember this. I still have a lot of my old magazines, too, by the way. Not all of them, but I have... I mean, I found my old art. So... I know that the magazines are still around. Why lie? I need Mario Kart. Okay. Is that... Yeah, okay. Being broke is no joke, but you shouldn't have to sell your precious bodily fluids for game Oh my god. For game money. Hit game crazy for the best deal on trades and used games. This dude's gonna be like... Coming all over the place. Just so he can... Play Mario Kart. Oh, plasma and blood donations! Oh! Wait, you can do that on the street? Like, you can just, like, donate plasma while you're on the side of the road? Oh, wait, wait, okay. Can you also donate plasma while you're sucking a dick? That's what I want to know. <laughs> That's a funny joke. Right, if you could just donate some plasma, that would be great. Just donate a little bit of plasma. That's what they call it these days, the plasma donation. You can't judge a game by its box art, so don't. Get a taste of any title at Game Crazy, and you won't get fooled again. Bring your old milk. It, uh, uh, what? These, these ads kind of suck a little bit. Radicalize your game with a subscription to Nintendo Power. Each month, you get it all. Scorching power tips, molten hot strategies. Amazing inside info and must-have advice. Straight from the pros at Nintendo. Score it now. Power up to death. Your mailbox will never be the same when 12 white-hot issues of Nintendo Power char the paint off of it every month. And all this for just 15 dollars. You save two twenty-five off the single-issue price each month there's that power again. You hold the key to unlimited power. Yeah, and it's just some... Some, like, weird fucking... What's he... What's with his goblin? He's got, like, goblin hands. But they didn't go goblin enough. I feel like they didn't, like, take it as far as they should have. They should have, like, really goblined that dude up. Grab your nuts. It's cold. 
it's really cold. And you know what? It's going to get colder. The whole world is being cocooned in ice and snow by the Yeti, a gruesome beast with an icicle for a heart. Quite appallingly bad breath. His plan is to create and rule a new frozen kingdom here on Earth. Thankfully, Mr. Nuts, Super Squirrel, is about to turn up the heat. Only he can prevent a new and permanent ice age. To help him on his way, he's got a lot of nuts. A lot of goods. And one enormous tear. Grab your nuts. <laughs> failed mascot. Yeah, I haven't done that segment in a while. Forgotten or failed mascots. Mental. <laughs> Psycho pinball, and it's just a dude holding an armadillo. Okay, I'm in. I'm buying it. Where can I buy that? I want it. <laughs> I've seen this one. Yep. I mean, it's just a PS2 advert, but it's it's kind of art. Like, there's something about this that I think it, it's just... It's hard to look away. And then, like, there's even details. Like, there's that weird baby that they use in ads, and... There's, like, the Maron. Oh, Maron in the back there. Is that Divine on the wall? It, it is, like, Silent Hill a little bit, yeah. like bones <laughs> yeah that's a that's a strange one blow doors or blow chow blow wait blow doors or blow chow Ugh. 25 cars to choose from race either direction five different tracks peak performance yeah, just, just put puke in the ad. I guess that'll sell copies. I know I have the sport sound effect somewhere. Okay, it's too late. It's not even on the screen anymore. Um, just to move away from the video gaming ads for just a second, let's, let's go back to random whatever aliens turned my milk green mysterious space dust re uh, recovered packets containing magic orange space dust that turns milk an alien green color have been mysteriously appearing in boxes of captain crunch's cosmic crunch cereal alien captain spotted in the supermarket do you know who this looks like to me chat this uh this child yeah you know you know what I'm gonna say you know what I'm gonna say up you know it's just a name I think you're taking it a little bit too literally I also um please uh, he's fine he's fine turtle exactly but am I not turtly enough for the turtle club Best comedy ever made. Um, yeah, yeah, it just looks like a young Dana Carvey. <laughs> Filmed on 9-11. It, actually not, though. That the Oh my god, the fucking... The misinformation about that movie has reached astounding levels. <laughs> and every time we get to the bottom of it, people are like, it happened at the towers. They filmed it at the towers. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite a thing. Pucker up and kiss your taste buds goodbye. The Puckerberry Blizzard treat, face it, it's sour. And, and I'm sorry, we, you want that? I mean, you know what, I can't even say that. I've eaten Warheads before. I like sour stuff once in a while. That face is almost an emote, though. But not quite. 
This uh, is immediately, uh, please stop. They're going to pull on you. Some people in one direction, others in another. And some in directions that you know aren't right for you. So after a while, what will all that pulling do to you? So don't do drugs, otherwise you'll end up with spaghetti arms. Got it. Luigi, there's spaghetti in there! No, Mario, that's spaghettification! Yes, spaghetti, spaghetti, I know, Luigi, it's in there, it's in a black hole, Luigi! But this, in this reality, Luigi is able to pull Mario away from the black hole just in time, and all that's left is Mario with spaghetti arms. Oh, here's a follow-up to that ad. Here's, uh, oh, this is a good one. All that pressure. Pressure to fit in, look perfect, get high, to be accepted. If you let it push on you too much, how will you change? You're flat! You're smushed! One joint turns you into a Goomba from Mario Brothers. It's true. At least I get where the, like... Obviously, there's a message here. I appreciate it. I respect it. But I mean, did anyone watch, like, look at those ads and say to themselves, you know what, I don't want to be spaghetti. And then they just gave it up. They gave up the spaghetti. Rated PG for pretty gross. We started with the song, but you know what, that's okay. Collect them all, garbage pail kids, green gum, gross stickers. Here's what you get in each outrageous pack. That gum is now, like, cardboard. I would know from first-hand experience. But I've opened a number of garbage pail kids on uh, card sauce. Gushers. Warning, flavor may get to your head. Yeah, uh, that's a pretty common Gushers ad tactic. Just turn their heads into fruit. But you know what? I kind of like this. The door is kind of funny. You get the dog, like, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah! Top 10 ways to tell if your home has an enemy hog. Sorry. <laughs> enemy. <laughs> energy hog. Family wastes so much energy, you're on Energy Company's Christmas card list. This is a Letterman list. Nine, your air conditioner usage has altered penguin migration patterns. Eight, so many lights on, your home can be seen from outer space. Seven, fireplace flu is just like a 7-Eleven store. It never closes. Six, space under front door is wide enough to admit small pets. Five, windows were last caulked during the Roosevelt administration. Four, your family thinks insulation is something for diabetics. <laughs> Three, your idea of energy conservation is a Saturday afternoon nap. Two, local history museum has called dibs on your refrigerator. And number one reason to tell if your home has an energy hog is number one, monthly energy bill larger than the U.S. deficit. Save money with uh, energy hogs and stuff. This is, yeah, I mean, this is like an earthbound enemy. Just like a hog, a hog person. Nowadays, that's saying something. Yeah, no shit. So enjoy never hearing again. I see what it's advertising. It does look like Adrian Brody. It's Adrian Grody, G-R-O-T-T-Y. But yeah, I definitely don't want my toothbrush going out my ear. Reach out. Reach out and touch someone. No, I don't think we will. Nope. Don't want to. I'm good. You can do whatever you'd like to, but I'd like to stay far away from this clown. It's the beauty of a phone call from far away. Wherever you are, you're never too far to reach out and share a bit of yourself with someone who's waiting for your call. A phone call makes you both feel good. Call someone because you care. 
even if it's just to say hi. So reach out. Reach out and keep close with faraway family and friends. Give them a call. I feel like we can do something with this clown face. But I don't know what. I don't know if... I don't think it's an emote. I... Yeah. Turn Saturday morning upside down with Lunchables. Get your free Tune Twister inside Lunchables fun packs. Speaking of hog enemies, get your free Tune Twister. Let's see. You'll see your favorite cartoons twisted around upside down with your Tune Twister. You can untwist Disney's Doug, Recess, and Pepper Ann. Douglas. Have you got it twisted? Uh, no, Mr. Dink. Oh, you definitely got it twisted, Douglas, because remember, we're family. Let me, let me take you to the Olive Garden, huh, Douglas? And finally, let's leave it here. It's a, a stretched frog. Huh. Frog gummies? I do like the frog gummies. I'll be honest. I am a fan of those. Oops, that's the wrong one. Hang on. Well, we'll leave it here. Um, I still have probably half the ads left. Like, there's another, you know, there's another segment in here. If you have any um, magazine ads that you would like to contribute, or, you know, for a future segment, whatever, please, um, vinesauce.email, contact form, and uh, we can maybe do this again sometime. Squeezed hogs and stretched frogs. That's the segment. Basically, thank you, um, everybody who participated in submitting these. I don't know who you are, 100%. I know Jackal was able to vet these, but, uh, oh, okay, hang on, hang on. Hal Strider Gamer made the logo, submitted by Jackal, Corvus, Reptile Hand, CD, and Milk, and Miker, not Milker. <laughs> I was going to say Milker. It's not Milker, it's Miker. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry about that. All right. 